So Joe Madden's gone. And the question is, who's next? And what's interesting to me about who's next is that some years, not a lot of managers get fired. And then all of a sudden, it's like breaking the seal. If you've ever been to a bar and you're drinking a lot and you don't want to go to the bathroom and then you do go to the bathroom and then you have to go to the bathroom again five seconds later, five minutes later, and you say, I've broken the seal. Don't break the seal. That's an expression I like to use. As I get older, I wait longer because once the seal is broken, you might as well just pitch a damn tent. Get right back in line. So now the managerial firing seal has been broken, and there's going to be more. Yesterday, word came out that Don Mattingly held a 90-minute team meeting with the Miami Marlins. When we would have team meetings with the Marlins, we would either the manager would approach us and say he wants to have a meeting. We would approach the manager and say we need a meeting. We would then decide who's going to be in the meeting. We would decide who we're going to tell about the meeting in advance, whether or not the media is going to hear about the meeting purposefully, whether or not we're going to comment after the meeting, before the meeting, who we're going to have speak during the meeting. All of this is decided. The Marlins have a problem. The problem is not their pitching staff. The problem is not the fact that Derek Jeter got canned. The problem is that their offense is mediocre, their run differential is outstanding, but their one loss record is not where they wanted it to be, but is where everyone expected it to be preseason in all of the predictions and simulations. And that is a major thing in baseball when you convince yourself that the simulations are not accurate. When you say we are a 500 team and if it hits right, we're going to be competing for a playoff spot. I said that every single year, except 2013. We've got this. The Marlins are 23 and 30. They're 12 and a half back of the New York Mets. And they are not going to win 81 games this year. Bruce Sherman, for whatever reason, was convinced that his team was a playoff team, that this was a big year. They said it before the season started. Don Mattingly said, we're done with excuses. This team has to win. And they have not been winning. So team meetings are often called when there is a underperformance going on. But the Marlins team meeting was not about that. The Marlins team meeting was about discord in the clubhouse. So in 18 years, I never had a team meeting because players weren't getting along. Players weren't working hard enough. Players were violating team rules. That would be individual one-on-one -on -one with the manager and the player team meetings for macro issues, not micro sort of scabs that were being picked every day inside a clubhouse. Players don't get along. That is common. It's like a family. You're together every day, hours a day, small spaces. Even though everyone's on the phone, on their cell phones, there's still frustration. You saw a little bit of Pat Riley when he did the Heat press conference to end the season after they lost to the Celtics in the conference finals when he talked about Nick Lowry and he acknowledged that Nick Lowry has some issues and has to come back in better shape. That is a purposeful statement. When you say that about your player, you know that that is going to be an issue. I didn't call him Kyle Lowry. What did I call him? I'm pretty sure I said Kyle Lowry. Oh, I don't know who Nick Lowry is. I, mean, I was thinking Nick Lowe, the musician. Kyle Lowry, of course. There's some rumors that there are people out of shape in the Marlins clubhouse. There's some rumors that players aren't working as hard as other players want them to work. And Don Mattingly felt it was time to air it out in a public way. A fascinating move. Because he just as easily could have called the players who were not getting along into his office, the players who were out of shape into his office. But as a veteran manager who we hired in 2016 and is one of the sole remaining people left from when we were there, said to himself, this is the moment where we are going to have an open forum where players are going to confront each other with full accountability with the other 25 guys on the roster. So 26 guys met for 90 minutes. Don Mattingly comes out of the team meeting. He meets the media. He explains what happened. And he says, I'm not going to be surprised if we come out flat tonight. And everyone was getting on him. What kind of statement is that by a manager? He looks defeated. He looks terrible. And then you look and you see, wait a minute, 
They're playing the Nationals. Brilliant, Donnie. The Marlins crushed the Nationals last night. One of the easiest bets of all time to make. The Nationals, as you know, are terrible. The Marlins got good pitching from their young pitcher, Cabrera. They got a grand slam from Jazz, who, by the way, is one of the issues in that clubhouse. And they win 12 to 2. So when you have a team meeting and you win the next die that night, I used to fall prey to this, and then I got smarter. I fell prey to the recency of the prior game. So that's why opening day always meant so much to me because when we won opening day, I felt like we could go 162-0. and When we lost opening day, I felt like we were never going to win a game. When you have a team meeting or you make a managerial change or you fire a coach or you make a trade, when something happens, you want very badly to win the following game. If for no other reason than to be able to say to the media that, look, there was a reason for doing what we did. But the underlying issue doesn't go away with the managerial change. It doesn't go away with a team meeting. It's sort of like having one therapy session, like when you're trying to have psychotherapy, you're trying to figure out your childhood, you're trying to figure out the traumas, you're trying to figure out your marriage, whatever you're trying to figure out. You go in one time and you say, whoo, we're good here. I got it now. We'll take it from here. You've given me the tools to move forward, and I'll climb the mountain by myself. It doesn't work that way. You have to have more appointments, and then more appointments, and then you have to dig a little deeper behind that curtain, and then you have to go a little below the surface and see, ooh, I didn't want to look at that. Let's put that back in the closet. Oh, you're going to have to look at that. No, not today. Let's look over there. Ooh, there's plenty to work on over there. Let's totally clean up that room. It's sort of like when you're cleaning your house, right? You do this. Do you clean your house, not the dirtiest room at, the, at first, right? Because it seems overwhelming. So you, you clean the stuff that's almost already clean. It's like if you have to put away dishes or put away clothes, you take the little pile, put that away, and sort of just close the door to the dirty room. It's like cleaning your basement. It's just overwhelming. And then it gets more overwhelming, and so there's less chance you have to address it. That's what festering in a clubhouse means. And one trip to the basement doesn't make it clean. So the Marlins issue, Bruce Sherman is going to thank the owner of the Marlins that it's gone away, but it hasn't. Which is why Bruce Sherman is going to get so frustrated. He hired Kim Ming, which was a totally PR-based hire, then fired Jeter, gave Kim Ming more power, hoping that she can be the GM who she wants to be. Signed a bunch of players who they overpaid for in Garcia and Soler. Have the top pitching staff in baseball, the number one or two pitching staff, sorry Yankee fans, deeper. I think the Marlins pitching staff may be even deeper than the Yankees pitching staff. But they're 23 and 30. Donnie, I love you, man. But you're going to get fired. And you knew this going in when we did the ownership change. You knew that you knew Jeter and that there was a chance you'd get to stay on. You knew that Jeter wouldn't want to get rid of you so quickly because of the Yankee connection. But the fact of the matter is that your time is up. And I'm sad about it because Donnie is such a good manager and such a good person and so smart around these younger players. And it's hard to be as good a player as he was and to be as good a manager as he is. It's really hard if you look at really good players being really good managers. It's really rare. I'm sorry we couldn't make the playoffs together. I'm sorry for what happened in 2016. I'm sorry that we abandoned you after 2017. But wait to see. It's an official one. Don Mattingly is going to get let go because the Marlins' problems are not going away because they don't get to play the Nationals 162 times. Wait to see.